Hi, welcome to Total Health. Thank you for coming to join us and consider uh, topics relevant to present truth. Let's ask God's blessing and presence as we consider this topic. Please bow with me. Heavenly Father, thank you for life in the last days and help us to make uh, light that we see and understand clear so others can consider it. Uh, bless our time together. We ask for your Holy Spirit. And we claim your promise where two or three are gathered, you're with us, uh, and to do exceeding abundantly for Christ's sake in his name. Amen. <clears throat> the Sabbath school lesson this week is uh, on the focused on prophetic times. The, the, the title for Monday's lesson is uh, uh, Prophetic Times, and the Tuesday's lesson is the 70 weeks and 2300 days. Uh, interestingly enough, because they come out of Daniel, and Daniel has an end time application. It's sealed till the time of the end. Uh, and of course, pioneers thought they were in the time of the end. Uh, actually, um, yes and no. <laughs> Depends on how you define it. Because uh, I heard a fellow today on a, on a YouTube talking about 1798, time of the end. Well, that's now over 200 years ago. You know, it, what does the end mean? When you get to the end, there's no more. You know, and yet, <laughs> here we are. My point is that there is a double calendar, a calendar of day for a year that brings us to the Advent movement in 1844 and no more prophetic time of day for a year after that. But there will be a day for a day time as the prophecies of Daniel and Revelation are specific about uh, the three and a half years, time times and part of time, 1260 days and 42 months. Those are all the same period. And together, they uh, suggest, if you read it carefully, like in Revelation uh, 12, 11, verse 3, God's going to give his side power, his two witnesses, power for 1260 days. And when they finish their testimony, the beast ascends, and it gets power 42 months in Revelation 13, 5. So those two are, it's stated differently. 1260 days is different than the beast time of 42 months. It's, that's subsequent. Uh, the, so it's a total of seven years, like Joseph's seven years of famine. Nebuchadnezzar's eating grass for seven. It's going to be difficult times for lots of people. And um, the seven days around Jericho. And uh, we need to just understand that Daniel will have that end time uh, application. And when does it start? I think the, cl the clue is in Daniel 9. Uh, and eight and nine, really, if we understand it right, uh, pioneers misunderstood it in Daniel 8:17 when it says the vision is at the time of the end. They were thinking of 2,300 evening mornings, days, years for the time of the end, and they thought that the beast had had the deadly wound. Yes, it had, but the deadly wound was healed in 1929 when uh, Mussolini reinstated the papacy and gave it the Vatican area. Uh, that's when the deadly wound healed in Revelation 13, verse 3. And two verses later, it says, Power was given him to continue 42 months. That's after the deadly wound healed. So there's going to be a three and a half year period, but we get three and a half years first of power, okay? And when does it start? <laughs> I believe that uh, I'm just telling you what I see, and I'm, I'm very happy, comfortable with the fact that it seems to make a lot of sense to me. The, uh, the Daniel 8 and Daniel 9 prophecies are tied together uh, by Daniel 9, verse 24. It says, 70 weeks are determined. The, the Hebrew word is kothok, cut off, so that there's a remnant, okay? Cut off from the 2300-day uh, prophecy. And in the uh, William Miller's time prophecy, they had the 2300 years, and then, uh, but at the first part of it was the 70 weeks, okay? from uh, 457 to, uh, to 34 AD was uh, 7 times 70, 490 years. And we're needing to see that that will happen again. Why? Okay, well, it was from a decree to restore and build Jerusalem. We don't. We think, oh, that's dead and gone. Uh, well, not exactly. Uh, Christ emphasized it as a sign for end times. Okay, it was the first sign in Matthew 24. And in Luke 21, 20, it says, When you see the abomination standing where ought not. I'm sorry, I back up. Uh, it says, When you see um, uh, Jerusalem compassed with armies, in, in verse 20. 
uh, you know its desolation is nigh. And my point is that we will see it. Zechariah 14, 1 and 2 says, The day of the Lord comes, and all nations will be battled against Jerusalem to battle. The houses will be rifled, the women ravished. That's what is will be the kickoff for end times, and there will be a decree to restore and build Jerusalem. And it will be relevant to us, that 70 weeks. We have, what, what, what was the 70 weeks about? They, they went, uh, <laughs> at, at the decree to restore and build Jerusalem, they left Persia and went and rebuilt the city of Jerusalem. Well, I think spiritually, uh, God's going to have a spiritual kingdom in the end, and it's not about uh, a physical Jerusalem and a temple and uh, worship uh, uh, animal sacrifices again and things like that. The Jews think so, but that's not what God is dealing with. And uh, But we should know that Ellen White's last book, Prophets and Kings, she didn't call it Prophets and Kings. She called it The Captivity and Restoration of Israel. Um, got my mother's copy. Maybe you can see it there. Rest Captivity and Restoration of Israel. Uh, that's based on Jeremiah 30, verse 3. It says, Lo, the days come, saith the Lord, that I'll bring again the captivity of my people, Israel and Judah, and cause them to return to the land that I gave their fathers, and they shall possess it. Okay, this is for the end time. When you can't buy or sell or hide in this country and uh, eat little Debbies in a cave somewhere or canned goods, you will be found, persecuted, probably tortured. Bad news from the papacy, uh, but that's they, they haven't, their nature hasn't changed. Uh, they did it in Rwanda about 20 years ago, uh, 25 years ago, uh, and Pope John Paul just said, sorry, baloney, you know, not really sorry, uh, they, but uh, nearly a million Protestants, a lot of more Adventists, uh, were martyred, killed, you know, for their faith. And the UN, there were so many uh, UN vehicles on the streets of Kigali that they could have, uh, that somebody said if you, if you spit, you'd probably hit one of those vehicles. But uh, they were all ordered to stand down, do nothing, just let the local government handle it. Well, local government was Catholic, and so uh, a million Protestants and a lot of Adventists were killed. And uh, nothing, you know, and don't think that that human nature has changed in all the years of the papacy from 538 to 1798 it went into captivity then but it is alive and well today that spirit of persecution and uh, we are foolish if we think that we can uh, witness uh, in Rome when the Pope is calling everybody to come and sign his Laudato Si and seek unity of Christian faith Christian faith my foot he's more in harmony with the Muslims he calls them Muslim Brotherhood and uh, I, I just think that's uh, you know, uh, he, he's closer to them than real Christians, uh, and Sunday is, is uh, as phony as a three-dollar bill, as far as the Bible goes, and they know that. They just claim Sunday on the basis of of, ch of uh, Christ church authority from Peter, uh, but Peter was a married pope. He had a wife. Uh, his mother-in-law was sick. Uh, search it out in the Bible. And uh, when Christ said, on this rock I'll build my kingdom, Petros is a little rock, rolling stone. Rock is Christ, the, the testimony that he is the Son of God. So uh, it's on that testimony that we build the church. And bottom line is that uh, we just, uh, unless we see the big picture, we don't know where the edges are, and we think we're at the end. But <laughs> there's a very broad picture, and I've, uh, it says in, Psalm 90, verse 12, teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. That means you, you can't apply your hearts to wisdom if you don't number your days. And I believe that it's, it's possible because God said I won't do anything without revealing it through the prophets. And uh, I'm, I'm happy that the Bible offers a big, broad picture. And uh, in that same chapter, by the way, it uh, says in verse 4 that a thousand years in your sight are like uh, yesterday. And uh, Peter cites that verse when he says a thousand years are like a day, day is like a thousand years. God is not slack, the day of the Lord will come. He says that in Second Peter 3, 8 to 10. And uh, if we understand that and integrate the jubilees into a thousand years, the, the, 10 jubilees make 490 years, they're 49 years apart, Jubilee event was when the Artaxerxes gave the freedom to return to build their land. That was a, like uh, 
Leviticus 25, in the Jubilee year, they, uh, in the sabbatical year, they proclaimed Jubilee, and that sabbatical year was 457. They left the following year, 456, and if you just count up the years, not 10 Jubilees till Christ's time, but 50, you come to Pope John Paul in the UN on the Day of Atonement, of all things, in 1995. And that was the end of 50 Jubilees, but then a 20-year gap until Pope Francis also went to the UN, also on the Day of Atonement. And so if we can understand uh, what's the 20-year uh, gap for, uh, try to integrate the, the uh, Jubilees into a thousand years. You have 490 and 490 more make 980. There are 20 years left over marked by the papal visits in 1995 and 2015. That's the end of 6,000 years. And if God is not slack in that context, there's something else going on that I believe is uh, signified by uh, what another Bible teacher used to be at PUC says, twice speak. Uh, when God says something twice, we should pay attention. It's once in history and again at end times. And uh, specifically, Joseph told Pharaoh that his dream of fat cows and skinny cows, fat heads of corn or grain and skinny uh, uh, heads of grain, that is doubled because in the end time it will be for us as well. And so what we're seeing is the good years right now. We're seeing God, you know, since... Uh, Trump was elected in 2016, the economy's been good, basically, and we can smile and, and think, when in the world is Christ coming? Well, it, it's going to end at the end of another seven years after the sabbatical. 2015 was a sabbatical, and those seven years, 2022 will be another sabbatical. But after that year, I think end times will begin with bad things uh, as uh, all, as it says in Zechariah 14, all nations will be gathered against Jerusalem. And when we see that, we have to wake up and give a midnight cry. The bridegroom is coming because a month later, I believe judgment will fall on America. Okay, The time of judgment will be as the days of Noah. Passover was the time of judgment in the Bible times. Uh, God said at Passover, I will execute judgment. And he did on Egypt. And America is like Egypt. It kills Egypt killed babies, we've aborted 60 million, and we have enslaved most people, and we have a heritage that's very parallel. Um, Israel went into Egypt in a time of famine. People fled Europe from the papacy in a time of famine for the word of God. They came seeking uh, freedom here, and uh, we've had our time and opportunity, and we have uh, an America that started out good has become like Egypt uh, in many ways with uh, a diverse rainbow of lifestyles and negative uh, bondage type stuff. So uh, we're going to get it and I believe that the the uh, timing clues in Matthew 24 as the days of Noah uh, all the way through those parables you see the next parable says then which means same time and when the evil servant begins to smite his servants, fellow servants then it's like ten virgins and the ten virgins is like a man traveling to a far country. All those are tied together but travel to a far country, we haven't understood it. It's a provision for second Passover. If Israelites took a long journey, couldn't keep Passover, uh, couldn't get back in time for Passover, they were to keep it the second month. And in this case, Christ is the one who took the far journey. His return will be in accordance with his law at second Passover in time for judgment. Okay, And uh, if we aren't watching and praying on that evening, uh, in, in I think spring of 2023, after big trouble comes, uh, you know, just shrug this off if you want till uh, 2022 when uh, that's the a sabbatical year. If things start in 2023 with Jerusalem compass with armies, you need to relook at this because you could be a foolish virgin uh, banging on the door because um, uh, and and some people out there, you know, I just saw a part of a video today, Jeff Pippinger. And uh, he, he thinks close of probation and, and November 9, at least that's what his YouTube says. It was posted five months ago. I tried to post a long answer to it. And I don't know if anybody saw it, but um, this is not the close of probation. Um, and the foolish virgins will have their opportunity in the face of a sudden calamity because that midnight cry is like Egypt. There was calamity in Egypt that fell on the Egyptians, and it will fall on America as well. 
and America and Adventism judgment begins at the house of God Ellen White in the context of her earthquake vision at Loma Linda said it seemed that judgment day had come well that will be it will be judgment day and it will be a time for the message the bridegroom comes go ye out to meet him and if we aren't prepared to do that I think you know share what you know communicate listen stay loose you know uh, the church is not going through to the kingdom as we now define it the GC church she defined it as a covenant keeping people in her last book prophets and kings page 7 13 and 14 and to be a covenant keeping people we're going to have to make a covenant like Israel did when they came out of that calamity okay and uh, 50 days later Pentecost was the time at Sinai for the for the covenant that they made and accepted and we have to do similar Ellen White says the types related to the second advent must be fulfilled at the time of the symbolic service so um, I hope I've made a little sense here uh, it's not easy to follow I know I'm kind of talk fast and uh, maybe not the best teacher but uh, I think it's uh, it hangs together pretty well and if you'll study it out uh, and uh, we'll have a book available for you soon uh, next week maybe uh, we'll talk about it then but thank you for listening and uh, let's pray and, and share this with others as you have opportunity uh, your mail list or what uh, thank you